Hello everyone, my name is Fia Forström and you are listening to the 100% Inspirational Podcast. Hey, wat goed dat je luistert en staat weer voor je klaar. Je wekelijkse dosis inspiratie is weer daar. De allerleukste gasten geven al hun kennis prijs. Met je veel te blije host, hij praat je bij. Zijn naam is Thijs. Thijs. Yes. Welcome, listener, and welcome to you, Fia. I think you could not understand one single word of that intro jingle. Um, no, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> it's different from um, from your language. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you. It's such a huge honor that you are here in the podcast. I think some of my listeners right now are, are going crazy, like, oh my God, he is Fia in his podcast. And others are like, who, who is she? And I'm really curious to know her better. Um, you are an artist, you uh, a singer-songwriter, if I can put it like that. Uh, but I think you are very more than that. Um, my passion is to combine um, personal development with entertainment. And that's why I do theater shows. And I think you combine personal development, healing with, uh, with music. And uh, that's the reason why you're here in the 100% Inspirational Podcast. Um, some of your songs um, have had huge impact on my life in the last uh, 12 months. Um, for example, the, the song When I Found You. Uh, so I want to talk with you about that to make it very personal. Um, but also I want to talk with you about where do you get your inspiration from and you're super young you were born in 1994 so you're 26 or 27 i guess yeah 26 26 so i'm i'm positively surprised where do you get all this wisdom from um but for my uh a listener who listens every week uh, let's start with one question that every of my guests uh, get and get to answer and that is dear fia what do you want to be or become when you grow up? Mm. I want to be... Um, I want to be all of me. I want to be 100% fear. <laughs> um, in a world that is very... Um, very often wanting us to be something else. I feel like that is the... That is the biggest thing that I I can do is to just come home to myself again and again um, and really just embrace myself completely. Yeah. So I want to be all of me when I grow up. (laughs) And you want to be 100% Fia, which is a great answer. I don't know if, if it's a coincidence or... (laughs) <laughs> that you always use this term because I'm always talking about I want to be 100% Thais. It's even in the jingle you just heard. Um, are you 100% Fia at the moment? I would say that I am. Yeah, I would say that I am. And there's always pieces of myself um that I'm that I feel like I might want to um, bring closer or amplify or I don't I don't see myself as I'm done like I'm complete like on my journey you know mm-hmm. I feel like I'm a, I'm a complete as a person and I am a I'm whole and all of that but there is always um, there's always more. Um, love to give myself there's always more um tender care for the the aching parts you know Mm. and have you always thought and felt that you are whole or is that maybe what started your journey in in self-love and self-help i felt uh early on in life i've always felt like i was a bit different and I liked being by myself and I was a lot outside in nature and building forts and climbing trees and playing with the water. And 
I was very interested in the the subtleties in life. And that not everybody was that. So many many of my friends thought that I was weird. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> um I always had a um a well developed sensitivity as well. Mm-hmm. Um which uh, made certain social situations quite um, overwhelming before I um, came to a point where I was able to um, really assert boundaries, really knew how to nurture and care for myself so that I would not go into overwhelm. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it wasn't until maybe I was 19, 20 something, where I felt like, ah, now I have a, now I have a release. Like, I know what I need. I know what feels good to me. I know what does not. And uh, up until that point, it was kind of like a, a seeking for mm. that. Yeah. I know that this... Um resonates with a lot of my uh, listeners and viewers. Um, let's dive into sensitivity some more. But first, at at this stage, when you were 19, was there something specific that that, that, that created this change that you finally, uh, yeah, I don't know how you uh, said it just uh, then, but something like that you found your home or that you uh, accepted yourself. Was there a specific reason that that happened at that moment? Yeah, I um, I had just moved back home with my parents after having dropped out of a music education. And this was a really good school and it was not everybody who got accepted to the program. So it was kind of like a privilege to be there. Um, but after one and a half year, I just felt that it wasn't right anymore. I was not happy while I was studying and I was feeling very anxious and I, I got, um, I got, I got all of these different kinds of, um, different kinds of issues. Like I didn't sleep and I didn't, I wasn't happy. I could say like my mental health was not that great. Um, and I felt really lost. Um, and that was a weird place to be because music had always been my home. But it wasn't at that moment. So when I came back to the little town that I was from, um, I gave myself a recipe of sleep and yoga. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did to get back into my body, um, get out of a very busy mind and uh, begin to really ask myself deeper, bigger questions, such as how do I want to live my life? What do I want to do? And how do I want to do the things I want to do? And I'm sure many people can relate to that when you start taking steps on your personal development journey, if you just take one step, usually the next step will reveal itself. Mm -hmm. And for me, I came across all these different books And the first book that um, really shifted my perception of life was The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. So exploring the concept of presence and being the observer of one's mind, of one's thoughts and emotions. And what that helped me with was not only did I gain a a bigger spiritual awareness to use in my own life, like a tool how to navigate the human existence and all of its complexities. But I also could use it in my creative work because I realized that I am not what I perform. I'm not what I create. I am beyond that, which brought happiness and joy and an easefulness back into the way I wrote music. So that was in 2014. And um, was that the moment that you decided to 
uh, use this in your lyrics or was you always using healing or self-help kind of words in your lyrics? Mm, the kind of music that I put out, it, um, it started to come in the year after, in 2015. Um, I went to a beautiful place in Sweden called Engsbacka. And this is a festival and course center for spirituality and personal development. It's also a beautiful, vibrant, living community. And I was there for a whole summer volunteering and it just cracked me open. It was so beautiful. And that's when I started to feel inspired to write music again. And what I was writing about then was my own journey, but also I was telling the stories of people I met. So sometimes people ask, are all songs about you? And I said, many of them are, but not all of them. <laughs> hmm. and, and what made that you... Yeah, when you stopped the music education, you, you said something like, I lost my, your, your fun or your passion for, for music. What, what created that that happened? That I, the fact that I lost it, what made me lose it? Yeah. Yeah. And um, it was really, I experienced that at the school I was at, it was, it's a great school. Um, but I was not able to um, do my studies without putting this enormous pressure on, my, on myself. So I really wanted to perform really well. I always wanted to be a, a top student. I did not want to let anybody down. And that kind of just sapped it. like Because it was so much about what other people think and me trying to live up to like some partially imaginary and partially real kind of like standards um, that felt really restricting, you know? Mm -hmm. I felt as if it was taking away my creative freedom and I felt like, um, yeah, a loss of, a loss of uh, expression. I would say that that is what um, mm. took away the joy and fun and passion of it all for for quite a long time. And um, what piece of advice do you have for people who are listening or viewing right now and they can relate? Uh, they are like, yeah, maybe they're also very sensitive or they have the feeling that people don't understand them or they have the feeling that they can't express themselves. So they are in that search in the journey for themselves and um, they haven't hit home yet um, I, I, I hope you have a picture of, of, of yeah these kinds of, of situations where people can be in uh, I have been there you have been there if, if I hear that correctly in your uh, story what piece of advice do you have for people who are right now in, in that sort of situation I would say um, become curious about yourself. Become curious about the thoughts that you're thinking, the things that you're thinking about yourself and your life. I would invite you to sit down and just be in stillness. So trying some sort of meditation or mindfulness because many of us are living at a very high pace, high speed. And um, I feel what has been important in my life is to carve out these, these moments and this time in my everyday life where I meet myself, where I listen to myself, where I... Um, challenge myself where I do inquiry with myself um, because very often I I, um, I hear people say that oh but I, 
I'm not sure if I can do that or no, I can't do that because this and this one told me that. Like many of us are actually not owning our lives and many of us are not even aware of the power that we hold because we are constantly listening too much to the outside world and what it wants for us. So fine-tuning yourself to your truth. Actually, what is your truth? And who are you, really? Awesome. I, I like both your answer and the way how you um, how you speak very calm and, and in, in connection with yourself. Maybe this is a, a nice timing to listen to one of your songs for like one minute, uh, if that's okay with you. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, hopefully this will lead to very much uh, uh, um, streams here in the Netherlands. Um, so for, <laughs> for the listener who has, uh, um, yeah, hasn't heard of your music, this is a, a great first. And you, you said something a few minutes ago uh, about that you are much more than your uh, achievements or what you do. And you say, I'm so much more. Um, so I think that's a great uh, uh, um, intro for the song I Am. So, um, so let's listen to uh, like the first 60 seconds of, uh, of that song. You've been trying to Put me in a box Saying this is it You'll never be enough Take those dreams and put them on a shelf <laughs> And for many years I was holding back Thinking I should be More like this and that But then I saw the real truth Of it all No, I am not who you think I am I am so much more I am one with source, I am limitless, infinite, powerful, abundant, complete from the start, creator of all I am, that I am, oh yes I am, that I am. And I've been stuck yeah, awesome. <laughs> Uh, wish we could listen to this uh, entire song. Um, <laughs> for, for the people who did not hear the lyrics, I mean, it's so um, healing almost. Uh, uh, I'm trying to read Thank the lyric you. now from a small screen in front of me. Uh, I am uh, not who you think I am. I'm so much more. I am one with source. I am limitless, infinite, powerful, abundant, complete from the start, creator of all. Can you share with us how did you came up with this uh, lyric? Yeah. Um, the, the seed of inspiration for I Am um, was actually a meditation um, from uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer that is called the, the I Am Meditation. And I think if you YouTube it, you'll find it. Mm. Um, what really struck me with that was a, a beautiful simplicity. Um, it is a, a beautiful sound journey um, that really, I felt, just uh, connected me even deeper with my own being and by feeling my own being I could feel myself connected to all things because that is how I view life I see everything as interconnected um, if you zoom out and if you look at it from a metaphysical level um, and from a, a scientific level everything is vibrating just at a different a different pace, you know, that is what makes certain things dense and others not. Um, so 
that meditation was a seed of I am. And then combining that with what was going on in my life, it's just this re, re, reclaiming of my creative self and realizing that I get to choose. I get to choose what kind of life I want to make. I'm not just at the mercy of some outer power. I have the power inside of me, which means that I can create whatever I want. And it's not just going to happen through a snap of a finger, you know? Some things are like really grind and you build it from the ground up. But certain things are just like magic. Um, I think it was... I wrote this song to be a booster for when I need to remember. Because as we touched upon in the beginning, it's a never ending story. Mm -hmm. It's a never ending journey. I'm never going to arrive and I will need these helpful reminders. So that's what I am is. And do you maybe have an example um, in your own life of something that you've created from this mindset? The mindset of, okay, I am the creator of all and some things take time and a lot of uh, focus or energy and some things are like like magic. Uh, mm -hmm. So do you have an example in your own life that, that something just happened uh, um, mm -hmm. because of this mindset or this I am the creator of all realization? Yeah. I would say um, the step-by-step -step example would be like the business that I built around my music. Um, I've crowdfunded all of my albums with the help of my listeners. I put them out um, independently, which means that there's no record label behind me. I run I Call the Shots. And, uh, and this is something that I've been building since 2015 now. And it is beautiful to see how it's blossomed and keep on growing, um, which I'm very grateful for. Um, instant magic. Yeah, this was a really, really uh, incredible one was, I think, three years ago. I was really into um, like really architecting my reality. So I had a document where I'd written about every single area of my life, how I wanted it to be, how I wanted it to feel. And then I had taken in, like, I was gonna go and play a show in San Diego, California. And for fun, I wrote about that evening beforehand. So mm -hmm. I wrote it out like, yeah, I'm coming to the venue and I feel so supportive, everybody's, thrilled that I'm there and everybody knows what they're doing. The show is kick-ass, you know, just as if I was there. And at the end, I add, just for fun, to see if it could happen, I add, and at the end of the show, there is a person who comes up to me so grateful and so happy for the music. And this person gives me a money gift, <laughs> just gives it gives a money gift and it's so so incredible and I'm like well maybe this happens but I kept I read this script that I had written for about two three weeks before the show and I read it every single day morning and evening and the show comes around and at the end of the show, this man walks up to me saying, hey, I, I love your music, Via. And just check your PayPal account. <laughs> and in the car home, I check it and uh, there's a thousand dollars in there. Wow. That he, just, he just gave. So that was like one, one of those magical moments where I, I really got to see that, yes, I create my own reality. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I, I have goosebumps here right? and I feel yeah, your, yeah. your energy when you tell the story. <laughs> wow. Awesome. And, um, 
yeah, you, you said you build a community around your music. Um, a lot of your songs have over one million plays on Spotify. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Congratulations. And you, you still keep, uh, keep growing. Um, and do you get back from a lot of people? Now I'll tell you my personal story in a moment, but that people use your music in meditations or in ceremonies or in healings. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, and it's uh, it's amazing. It's beautiful to know that it's out there. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And um, maybe listen to a, a small bite from the song Yes and More, please. Uh, because I have a question uh, about that lyric. So um, if you're ready and the listener as well, um, let's listen to this great song. Oh, I had pressed the wrong button. Uh, no. I am ready to receive all the love that's given me Knowing I am worthy, yes and more please I am ready to release all the fear and anxiety Trusting I am held in the light by divinity Let's listen to some more because I want to hear the chorus. <laughs> I am ready to receive all the love that's given me Cause I know that I am worthy, yes and more please I am ready to release all the fear and anxiety And I trust that I am held in the light by divinity So I am made of stars And that I am the love that I'm looking for Knowing that my heart is my home Yeah, I think it's so much fun to uh, let the listener hear this music in this interview. Uh, it's a really wide question, but I'm just curious about your answer. Those last few sentences, um, knowing I am made of stars and that I, I am the love that I'm looking for, knowing that my heart is my home. Uh, can you elaborate on these uh, lyrics? Yeah, absolutely. Knowing that I'm made of stars, um, that's just fact. Like, we're made of stardust. <laughs> um, and that I am the love that I'm looking for. I believe that we are ultimately looking for ourselves. And we are often doing it, like, in meetings with other people. Like, we are mirroring each other. Mm and reflecting back. And um, at the end of the day, it is my job to love me. And from that space, I am even more capable of giving love to others. And uh, for me, it's about, yeah, this, um, this love declaration that I will always have my own back. Mm. That I'm not gonna abandon myself, you know? And that, in me, that just brings comfort. Yeah. And the final line, which is knowing that my heart is my home, ties into that too. Like, wherever I go, I'm home. As long as I'm connected to myself. Simple as that. And yeah. 
I think as simple as it is, as hard as it sometimes is to do it in reality or to feel it, um, I, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with my coach and I was talking about sometimes I'm afraid that I get abandoned. And, and he said very wisely, Thijs, uh, deep down inside, you're not afraid that someone will abandon you. Um, you can only abandon yourself. <laughs> That's what you're afraid of. Um, and you were talking about self-love and, and I think great words that you always have your own back. Um, but then again, self-love is something that I think almost everybody, especially people who are in this uh, search or journey uh, in, in personal development, that, that almost everybody knows that self-love is the most important thing. Uh, but then again, how do you do that? So can you maybe reveal some of your um, rituals or meditations of whatever? What do you do to, uh, to feel the, the self-love? For me, self-love is about um, actually caring for myself, truly. It's not about rose petal baths and chocolate dipped strawberries, though I love both of those. It is about in moment to moment in my life, staying true to myself. Um, speaking what I know and feel to be um, true, um, to care for myself when it comes to practical things such as work, like not overworking or not working too little because that can suck too. Mm -hmm. um, um, Self-love for me is knowing when to stop and when to uh, just go. Um, Self-love to me is becoming very, very intimate with myself. And how that looks in my daily life, um, I have a practice each morning where I, for me, it's music making. I meet myself through my music. And in my writing sessions, I will receive all the information that I need to know to be able to care for myself. Um, for other people, that might look like sitting down, closing your eyes and listening to your breath. And while you do that, you might notice deeper layers. Perhaps there are emotions that comes up when you give them space. Um, Maybe there is something that you need to resolve with someone. Um, I think it's getting to know yourself so deeply and honoring that. Yeah, becoming like a tree <laughs> <laughs> so that even when it, even when it's really windy, you're solid. You, you're, you, you're just anchored in this love. This love of your eternal self. Yeah. And in this journey of finding self-love, or maybe you can even say in this healing journey, in your personal journey, have, what kind of um, rocks on the road have you found? To, um, to become more whole with yourself, so to heal and to feel the self-love more? For me, it's been important to um, embrace my brilliance, to um, really love my light. Um, because I, when I was growing up, and especially in school, um, I had many, many encounters where I was told that I was too bright, that I was taking up too much space. Um, so for me, it's been a journey in realizing that I take up my space 
And it's up to everyone else to take up their space. I cannot take someone else's space from them unless they give it away or, you know. So reclaiming that. Mm. Mm. And then, like we talked to you before, um, turning my sensitivity instead of it being a burden turning it into a superpower, I usually call it, you know, it makes it possible for me to feel people deeply, to have great conversations, Uh (laughs) to write music that um, touches people, you know. Um, uh, These have all, all these things have been a gradual process and I still come up against them, just not so often anymore. And um, I think it's in one of your songs. I, I was looking for the song in preparation for this interview, but I couldn't find it. Maybe I have made it up in my mind. Um, but <laughs> I think uh, in one of your songs, you sing something like, my, my goal is to heal myself and the same goes for you. Something like that. Um... I, yeah, you, you, you got like half, you got a half, half of it. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You know the song? Yeah. Yeah. I know the song, um, a journey unfolding. Um, I think it's not my job to fix you, make you happy, feel complete. That is yours alone to handle. And the same thing goes for yes. me. Yes. What, yeah. What's the name of that song? <laughs> What is the name of that song? A Journey Unfolding. A Journey Unfolding. And this, to me, I interpreted this within the context of an intimate relationship. Was that the case for you? Yeah. 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 And and there's a question in here. um, um, Have you... um, Yeah. How did you... uh, I assume you have had relationships uh how did did you discover this 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 um yeah how do you say this this wisdom or this um this insight that in a relationship it's your job to find everything in yourself and the same goes for the other person uh, okay maybe tell us something about how this went in in your personal intimate relationships Mm, yeah sure so um after being in relationships where um i would fall into codependent behaviors i realized that um i don't want to do this shit anymore (laughs) (laughs) i need to change and uh, started to do my own work in uh, um taking care of that and realizing that while I'm do, I am uh, I am in that process in doing it, um, it's not enough if only I work on myself. The other person needs to work on them too, and they actually need to want to do that. Because, as I said, it is not my job to facilitate your healing. Um, sure, we can be healing catalysts for each other, and we support each other. You know. And we, and we're there, um, but I'm not going to be here taking your shit. (laughs) Like you're, if you have trauma in your baggage, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lovingly mirror that back to you that what you're doing right now, for example, hmm. I can't find a good example, but a behavior that is not so nice, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and if it's repeated, you know, I'm going to say, Hey, are you, are you aware of what you're doing? This is how it feels in me when you do this. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think I, I would suggest you look on that because it is creating a lot of pain, uh, in me and a lot of tension and frustration between us, you know? Um, so it was about raising my standards. And when I started doing that, um, I met people who were devoted to their own inner work and it was a lot easier to relate to them. Yeah. So to, mm. 
zoom out and summarize it, um, what a lot of people do in an intimate relationship is that because they don't feel whole themselves, mm. um, they want to fill that that hole <laughs> actually uh, with something from their partner. Is it attention? Yeah. Is it love? Is it uh, 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 compliments? Whatever. Uh, it's it's comfort and um, there are a lot of nice ways and there are a lot of not so nice ways to to get all this from your partner so that you feel complete uh, and 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 even though there are nice ways to do this it's not healthy to do this and it's healthy to yeah as you sing I've looked up the lyric right now uh, it's healthy to say it's not my job to fix you make you happy feel complete no that's yours. <laughs> and then I can't read it. So that is yours alone to handle. Yeah, it's yours alone to handle. I think this is not a great website that try to translate <laughs> your lyrics. Um, and the same goes for me. Um, I think that is healthy in a, in a relationship. Um, and uh, speaking of that, I, I want to uh, play one more song, and that's the song uh, "When I Found You." And um, maybe your assistant told you something about this, maybe not, but this is actually the reason that we're sitting here, that I ask you uh, for, for this interview. And that's because my, uh, my super sweet uh, girlfriend uh, did a process with me because she knew that I was going through some stuff in life, which also affected our relationship. So she uh, decided to do a sort of healing ceremony um, that would heal something inside of me. And uh, I, I laid in her arms and um, there were candles and, and blankets. It was very uh, uh, sacred and, and loving uh, place. And uh, then she put on some music and I did not know that she spent days and days uh, of searching for music that would help me in my process, that the lyrics would fit perfectly for me. And... Um, I even told this in another podcast and I, I also played your song in that podcast and I told uh, my listeners about you. And um, so I was lying in her arms. We were doing this process. I was a little bit skeptic. I was like, yeah, what is this going to heal for me? I'm just lying in your arms with some candles and some music. <laughs> <laughs> she knew better. And then the first song of her, well, it was like a, a 60 minute playlist, but the first song was, uh, was this one. Um, and it was because it was very fresh in our relationship. I was massively in love more than ever in my life. My heart and my feelings opened up more than ever in my life. Um, and the, the lyrics were, uh, were perfect for that situation. So um, maybe uh, uh, um, this is only personal for me, but I hope that a lot of listeners think this is a great song as well. So let's, <laughs> let's listen to the uh, first part of, uh, of the song called uh, When I Found You. I must have seen your face before I recognized that voice Even though we just met you feel like home Here I am in this whole new world And it's you who opened the door Living from the heart can be scary at start And I'm guessing you were sent by someone To teach me something new I was praying for guidance when I found you And I never thought that I would say this Or feel the way I do But you see, miracles happen If we allow them to Yeah, and then the question, Fia Is this song also about a, a person you, you met in your life? Yeah, it's about when I met my husband. Oh, <laughs> wow, because she just said I live with my dog. I uh, assumed that you are uh, 
you're single, but you um, you live with your dog, I'm married, not your husband. Um, yeah. um, we're in a distant relationship yeah. right now. He's American, and uh, we're working on getting him a Swedish residency. Mm. So it is our home, but it's ninety percent me who's here and the dog. So mm. yeah. <laughs> You're doing a great job that he's moving to you instead of the opposite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, that, that, that kind of answers my, my following question. How is your love life? So I assume it's, uh, it's going well. Yeah. Awesome. It's sweet. Awesome. <laughs> and um, yeah, we can uh, do some promotion for you, for my, uh, for my listeners, for people who are watching right now. Um, they can uh, stream all your music on Spotify. Um, yeah, that's but kind. you have also a shop on your website where people can even book a session with you. Is that correct? Yeah, um, I offer creative support sessions. So anyone who considers themselves a creative and are looking for some extra loving guidance that's available. Um, And then I have a lot of uh, voice journeys, um, the chakra song journey and Nordic spirit, where you get to explore your own voice um, together with me. So those are downloadables on my website, which is fiasmusicofficial.com. Oh yeah, fiasmusicofficial.com. Um, and we even have a, a, a discount for, for my listeners. Um, and I think the code is um, Inspiratie Thijs. So that's Inspiration Thijs. Inspiratie Thijs. And uh, if I understood this correctly from your assistant, it, it's a 25% discount. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, correct. You can use it in my uh, store on whatever you like. Okay, awesome. Uh, so use this code. Um, and for my listeners, this is not a commercial deal for me. This is uh, just for FIA. And uh, she said, uh, yeah, that for you as listener of this podcast, you can buy, uh, for example, this session or uh, uh, music or other stuff um, uh, with 25% off using the code Inspiratie Thijs via fiasmusicofficial.com. Um, what's in store for you, uh, Fia? You're 26, that's super duper young. Uh, three albums already, if that's correct. Uh, we uh, yeah. we listened to a few songs from the first album, Made of Stars, but uh, people, please also listen to uh, Legacy of Light and Waterfall of Wisdom, newer albums. Uh, but what's in store for you in the future? I, I intend to just keep on creating music. Um, as long as there are songs yearning to be written, I will be there with my pen and paper. Um... Yeah, and I have um, I have a couple singles coming out this year, so new music is in the pipeline, um, which is very exciting. And are you, when allowed, going to tour again and maybe even visit the beautiful Netherlands? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, in... Uh, in the Netherlands is where I've had some of my most memorable concerts in uh, the beautiful, <laughs> how do you say it? The Deutz, the Dove, the Dove Church in the center. In the center of um, which city? <laughs> of Amsterdam. Um, I'm not from Amsterdam, so I, I'm, I have never heard of, oh, of no, a then. venue called the <laughs> Dove. <laughs> Either anyway, it's a beautiful church in the middle of the city where we've filled, we filled the the whole church with people singing and dancing, and I wish to do that again soon as is allowed. Yeah, I just googled it, <laughs> and it says uh, the dove, which is the a pigeon. Oh, uh, yeah, in, in right. Dutch, uh, and it's a church uh, built in 1875 at the Prinsengracht in Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, what made those concerts over there uh, very memorable? They were really, they were just full of life. People were so excited. And I think we were about 900 people two nights in a row. 
And you can imagine all of us singing these songs together in a church. Mm. Not only not only did I feel like we were giving the church uh, a blessing, <laughs> um, but uh, it became um, a very a very high energy experience that I think um, and I hope left people feeling elevated and feeling a lot of love. Mm, yeah. Wow, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think that um, to summarize this interview, what what uh, what we've discussed multiple times is that when you slow down, um, take time for yourself to feel what 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 is there to feel, to uh, breathe uh, consciously. Uh, you also talked about your sensitivity. I talked about my process. Um, so I, I think that a lot of healing and um, self-awareness and self-love is uh, uh, created when you find, uh, when you're brave enough to, 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 to find those moments of, of silence and even meditation. Um, and I think your music is, is perfect for, for those moments to sometimes just sit in a room light a candle, drink some tea and listen to uh, Fia's music. Um, I, I think you agree, don't you? <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> I am on my own side, so I would say. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, is there at the end of this interview uh, um, a question that I should have asked but didn't do, Fia? Is there something uh, that we uh, should have discussed? No, I felt like you captured it all perfectly. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then it's up to you to, to give my listener a last piece of wisdom or advice. Mm. Keep it simple. Keep it joyful. Keep it light. Um, you don't have to take everything so seriously. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Fia. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for having me. My pleasure.